Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. The scriptures are a ketubah. It's a marriage contract, and, and, it, and it's about a wedding rehearsal that's to come, and it shows us what's to come, and, you know, we can't even stay married in our own lives. How are we going to achieve this? You know, we got to learn about love. How do we know about love if we can't stay married, if divorce is just as much in the church and out of the church? If we, you know, cannot stay married happily in our own relationships here, how do we expect to be worth it to be a bride for what's to come? And I am telling you, there is going to be division, there is going to be separation, and there will be problems in a marriage if there is uh, visually uh, women dressed around a man that shouldn't be there. It'll just happen one way or the other. The problem we have today, I believe, is, uh, you know, again, being set apart. And uh, set apart from who? Set apart from the non-believers. But when we're getting the same diseases, we look the same, and, and, and why, you know, are we, is that? And I realize, yeah, it is a lack of obedience and passion. However, you know, what leads us away from that is this issue of the whole modesty issue. Well, you know, it calls us to be set apart. And how can we be set apart if we look like everybody else? Is Born by the world's first motion picture house, the Nickelodeon, in 1905. Take a look at those high heels. Take a look at those. And yet we wonder why we have so many problems with our backs today and so many people support the chiropractors and everything else. That's crazy. That was 1905 and today it's even worse. The high heels messed you up. They messed me up terrible and I thought they were beautiful. I weighed 200 pounds wearing them also and now I'm down to 120. 73 years old. A miracle. Physically, emotionally and spiritually, what do you think of high heels? Oh, I cry when I see girls have them on. I want to talk to every girl I see and they look like Forgive me, a W H O R E. No, say it. They look like. Oh, say they it. look and like they are looking for a man to use them. Some women, they might call themselves women of Yahweh, but they certainly don't look or act like it. Realize this as a man, a married man especially. You know, I have a responsibility to to Yahweh, to myself, and to my wife uh, to protect to protect my, my what I do. Where there are men, you know, working like mechanics. You know, they they always like to stare at women and. and and have a good look but when you're in the dress reform it's kind of like not anything to look at just a face and they tend to respect you more you might not think it's an issue to wear pants you might not think it's an issue but it is revealing the shape of a woman it is revealing the shape of your body it is showing off what should be for your husband's viewpoint only you know, some women of the world uh, might say, you know, your man has to get his mind out of the gutter. Well, I say, you know, well, if she's dressed like she's from the gutter, how do you expect us, uh, you know, not to look if you're in front of us? Understand this. Whatever part of the body that you reveal not only says this is for sale, but it's also saying this is for the taking. So you need to be aware of this. Those high heels, I could not get down out of my rear end. I was in excruciating pain, excruciating pain, trying to get well. And I'm still trying to get those legs well. I see King David, King Solomon, I see uh, Judah, I see uh, Samson, all of them. Uh, their downfall was women and, and the beauty of a woman. And it will not always be the man struggling with this because the woman might struggle with it also. Women, you have a responsibility and also you should have a passion not to have those women. So you're the ones that should be saying something to these women or at least not bringing your husband to an environment uh, that, that has issues like this. You know, I know many and I spoke to many men about this and they say, you know, while well, I struggle, you know, my wife wants me to go to the mall with her and go shopping. You know, I tell you, I don't know what it is about a mall. But I don't know if women think it's a fashion show or whatever, but they go and, and go on to put on some of the worst abominational clothes that Yahweh could imagine, the teenagers there and everything else and the women there. They just, they got to go to the mall, maybe they're in competition with the other women at the mall, I don't know what it is. But, but ladies, you should not desire to take your husbands to these places. You understand, it says in the scriptures, not only is the doorway narrow, but the path is narrow as well. Uh, so we have to stay on the path and we can't stray off of it. Well, the scriptures tell us not to destroy the size of our beards. But more specifically, it tells us not to shave the hair on the body. How do we know and where does it say that? Well, we wouldn't grow hair if we weren't supposed to have it. It's for, for protective purposes. 
It protects our body. It protects our skin. Uh, and, and as for our beards, it protects our appearance. It separates w w the way we're supposed to be separated, a man from a woman. Uh, you know, it's just a cultural thing that people shave today, and it adds so much stress to the body on top of all of that. To me, shaving is unnecessary. Um, and to me, um, it is another aspect of vanity. Um, it's something that's not necessary, and uh, it's, it's to do with um, the Babylonish ways of this world and um, the pressure that society puts on, on women to, to be, you know, hairless. It's, it's not God's ways. And um, if we're covered in dress reform, covering our limbs um, in, you know, summer and winter, nobody's going to see that hair. When you look at this obsession we have with shaving, if God didn't want us to have hair on our body, He would make it so, like He does with some people, where they can't grow hair on their body. But the people that should be growing here, these are things he's given us. And it doesn't say not to cut it or trim it, but it says not to destroy it. And, and, and that's what we're, the problem we have today. We just shave everything off. And it's, uh, I believe it's uh, definitely something to do with our health, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Immodest dress by men and women is leading people uh, away from Yahweh. And it's also leading people to, to things that are going to lead to disease. And do we glorify him? Not only in the words that come out of our mouth or what we say we feel, but do we glorify Him in the way we look, in the way we act, in the way we walk. Yahweh is starting to convict me that it needs to be for Him. I'm doing it for Him, not me for anybody else. It's for me and Him. Um, and for the people around you to set the example that you're um, dressing modestly. Nakedness and shame went hand in hand. In the Garden of Eden, we look at what happened with Adam and Eve. Uh, they became shameful uh, when they saw each other being naked. And, and it wasn't good enough that they covered with the fig leaves. Yahweh covered them with coats of skin. He covered their bodies completely. You know, again, we're temples of the Most High God. And we're to be treated that way. And we're to treat ourselves that way. Uh, modesty is something that happens from the inside out. It's an attitude. It's a lifestyle that affects both male and female. Often this is just put upon our females, but it's also a male issue. Um, there's only certain people who are supposed to see certain parts of our body, quite simply, and that's our spouse, or perhaps our parents as, as we're a child. And modesty is, is from having downcast eyes and a humble spirit to the clothes we wear. Often, even in churches today, you see women wearing sundresses and they're going around hugging other men who aren't their husbands. But so those men are having to put their hands in places that, quite frankly, shouldn't be. And we have to do a better job. We're not talking about workers and those kind of things. You can be very stylish ladies and men as well. But you have to think, is what I'm wearing causing others to stumble? Is what I'm wearing, would I wear it if our Messiah came back today? Or would I choose something better? We have to shoot for something better. Look at all the lust and pornography in the world today. The world's running out of control. If you said, Paul, would it be a set-apart people? Just to show the world a difference. Let them come to us. Part of that's how we dress and how we act, not only in public, but also in private. We have to take back our lives. We have to take back the land. We have to take back the attitudes that belong to people of the king, children of the king. We can't be running around crazy like the world does, but we're impacted by it. We're to be in the world, but not of the world. So let us have a different standard. Let us have a higher standard, and let us be people full of light and salt so that we can show the world a better way. The Bible calls for a coming out, you know, we're not to be, we're to be in the world but not of the world. Um, God says come out from among them and be separate. We are Yahweh's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Yeshua so we can do the good things He planned for us to do a long time ago. If you stick according to His plan, you will get the result that He desired for us. And that result was not for us to suffer from disease the way people are suffering from disease today. And that result is not to get the same things that are happening to the non-believers of the world. We are called set apart for a reason. We're supposed to be set apart as believers. Set apart from who? Set apart from the world. And uh, there's a problem today when we look, act, feel, and we're getting the same diseases as, this, as the world today. So we're not 
The problem is we're not doing the good things that he planned for us to do. Come out of the world, oh my people.